Well, hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. And today I want to take a look at another interesting case study. You know, yesterday I did that interesting one on the laboratory acquired dengue fever. Now here I want to take a look at a similar type of story, but it's concerning um, a prion disease, uh, a variant Critzfield Jakob disease case. And uh, we'll get to the case in a second. Um, but I just want to do a quick review of prion diseases, prion diseases, um, for those of you that are not familiar with it. And these, uh, a prion is a type of a protein that can trigger normal proteins in the brain to fold abnormally. Prion diseases can affect both humans and animals and are sometimes spread to humans by infected meat products. The most common form of prion disease that affects humans is Crutzfeld Jakob disease. The prion diseases are rare. About 300 cases are reported in the U.S. each year. And there's several different types. And these are the human ones. Uh, Crutzfeld Jakob disease or CJD. A person can inherit this condition in which case it's called familial CJD. Sporadic CJD on the other hand develops suddenly without any known risk factors. Most cases of CJD are sporadic and tend to strike people around age 60. Acquired CJD is caused by exposure to infected tissue during a medical procedure, such as a cornea transplant. Symptoms of CJD quickly lead to severe disability and death. In most cases, death occurs within a year. And th this is a situation, this is a disease where there is no treatment. So if you do get it, um, your death warrant has been written. Now, variant CJD, and this is something we'll be talking about um, today, uh, this is an infectious type of the disease that is related to mad cow disease. Eating diseased meat may cause the disease in humans. The meat may cause normal human prion protein to develop abnormally. And this type of disease usually affects younger people. The only situation in this is it wasn't a via eating meat. It's, it's, we're going to see that it's a laboratory accident. And we have some other ones. Um, Gertzman straussler schneicker disease. Kuru, fascinating disease if you never got a chance to read about it. This was found in New Guinea uh, back in the day, several decades ago. And it was caused by eating human brain tissue contaminated with infectious prions. Um, it's incredibly rare now because awareness has been made to uh, these tribes in uh, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, that was eating uh, the brain tissue. And I'll go ahead and link to a story that I did on it, an article many years ago. But at least it'll give you a, a feel for what Kuru is. What causes prion disease? Well, it occurs when the normal prion protein found on the surface of many cells becomes abnormal and clump in the brain, causing brain damage. This abnormal accumulation of protein in the brain can cause memory impairment, personality changes, and difficulties with movement. Experts still do not know a lot about prion diseases, but unfortunately, these disorders are generally fatal. Who's at risk? People with a family history, eating meat infected by mad cow disease, uh, infection from receiving contaminated corneas or from contaminated medical equipment. We've seen outbreaks and I saw an outbreak in New Hampshire a couple years ago um, that uh, contaminated surgical equipment uh, caused several people to come down with a uh, prion disease. And like I said earlier that there's human and there's also animal prion disease and some of the animal ones, which we're not really discussing today, but just to make you aware, we have, of course, mad cow disease, right? Uh, BSE, bovine, spongiform encephalopathy. Um, that's in, of course, cattle. Then you have scrappy and sheep. Um, um, chronic wasting disease and cervids like deer and those type of animals. And, and there's others. So just um, want to make sure that you are aware that there are types that do affect animals um, in addition to these ones that affect humans. Um, symptoms, 
rapid developing dementia, difficulty walking and changes in gait, hallucinations, muscle stiffness, confusion, fatigue, difficulty in speaking. Um, Prion diseases are confirmed by taking a sample of brain tissue during a biopsy or after death. Healthcare providers, however, can do a number of tests before to help diagnose prion diseases such as CJD or to rule out other diseases with similar symptoms. Prion diseases should be considered in all people with rapidly progressive dementia. Different tests that you can do, there's MRI, uh, uh, sampling the spinal fluid, electroencephalogram, blood, different blood tests, and uh, different neurological and visual exams. Now, prion diseases cannot be cured, but certain medicines may help slow their progress. Medical management focuses on keeping people with these diseases as safe and comfortable as possible, despite progressive and debilitating symptoms. Uh, you can prevent prion diseases by proper cleaning and sterilizing of medical equipment that may prevent the, prevent the spread of the disease. Uh, if you have or may have CJD, don't donate any organs or tissue, inclu including your cornea. Um, okay, so that, that's, that's kind of the primer on prion diseases in case you were not aware of them. If you already knew about them, sorry you had to go through that. <clears throat> and let's go to the study real quick. And this came out in the New, New England Journal of Medicine a few days ago, July 2nd. And it's entitled Variant crutzfeld jakob Disease Diagnosed Seven and a Half Years After Occupational Exposure. Um, and I don't have a, a subscription to this right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to an article which really summarized uh, the study. And we'll take a look at that. And this is in... I want to make sure they get due credit. This is in Live Science. And it says, A young lab technician in France developed a rare and fatal brain disease after she accidentally exposed, uh, was accidentally exposed to prions, the infectious proteins that cause mad cow disease, according to a new report on the case. The accident happened in May 2010, when the technician was 24 years old, and working in a prion research lab, according to the report. She worked with samples of brain tissue from mice that had been infected with a form of mad cow disease, formerly known as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE. While she was using forceps to handle the samples, she accidentally stabbed her thumb through a double pair of latex gloves, enough to break the skin and cause bleeding, according to the report. More than seven years later, in November 2017, the woman began to experience a burning pain in her neck and right shoulder, which later spread to the right side of her body. One year later, in November 2018, doctors examined a sample of her CSF, which appeared normal. But by January 2019, she began experiencing symptoms of depression, anxiousness, memory impairment, and visual hallucinations. In March of that same year, samples of her CSF and blood were tested positive for variant crutzfeld jakob disease, a fatal brain condition that can take years to show up after exposure to mad cow disease prions. The woman died in June of 2019, 19 months after her symptoms first appeared. Um, now, since the woman was born around the start of the BSE cattle outbreak, there was a big outbreak over in uh, the UK in the 1980s, 1990s time frame. Um, that, as a matter of fact, if you were like in the military or any, or if you traveled, you spent some significant time in the UK during th those years. Uh, you, you'll probably notice if you try to donate blood, that's one of the questions. Have you been there? And you may be um, excluded because of that. So it, the researchers are saying it's possible she could have contracted the um, variant CJD through consumption of contaminated beef, but this scenario is unlikely, according to the report authors. Um, on average, variant CJD takes about 10 years to show up after exposure to contaminated food. 
And the last two patients with this disease in France and the UK died in 2013 and 2014, the report said. So it's possible that the woman developed the disease from exposure to lab materials contaminated with prions. Studies in animals have shown that injection into the skin is an effective route of transmission for these prions. It, says, it continues to say a patient in Italy also develops variant CJD after exposure to BSE infected brain tissue in a lab setting and died in 2016. Such cases highlight the need for improvements in the prevention of transmission of variant CJD that can affect humans in labs, the authors concluded. Uh, the report doesn't mention anything about any safety measures that were taken at that lab, how she was treated after the initial exposure, no, no information about that. Um, and apparently, um, a report from AFP says that the family of the lady that died filed a complaint for manslaughter against the National Institute of Agronomic Research where the accident occurred. The complaint alleged that the woman had not been trained in risk, was not wearing adequate safety equipment, and had no medical follow-up. In particular, the woman should have been wearing cut-resistant gloves. And you've seen, you may, if you're working in a laboratory, you may have seen those. They're kind of like, uh, like a metal mesh glove that would prevent like razors and knives and scissors and stuff from cutting through and uh, in, in, in cutting to your skin. Um, the woman did not undergo decontamination procedures until about 20 minutes after being injured, the complaint said. Um, anyway, the, uh, the name of the National Institute of Agronomic Research is, says they're cooperating with health authorities in the investigation. So anyway, very interesting case. And this is the second day in the row. I did a video on a laboratory acquired infection and, uh, Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was kind of neat, you know, obviously sad for the family, but very interesting. And again, it just, uh, if you're a laboratorian, as I am, it, it, it does make you think that much harder about wearing the appropriate PPE when you're handling, uh, you know, analytical samples. And um, uh, particularly if you're dealing with something that potentially could be um, infected with, with mad cow disease, you know, a dangerous life-threatening prion. So anyway, I hope you liked it. If you did, please share this with your friends. That's the best way to get these um, videos out, get the channel out there. Uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, like it, like the video, and uh, I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV.